Greetings and welcome to Live from Kaid. Tonight's special guest is the Laurel Sovereign of Arms, Dame Juliana de Luna. And featuring a live performance by, well, me, Master Bjorn of the Northern Sea. And as always, you guys know it, I'll be pulling double duty as your announcer. And now, here's your host, Master Laertes McBride. Greetings and good evening. I hope everyone's doing well tonight. Um, thank you for joining us once again. We should have a very cool show. I, I, I was talking to our guest beforehand, and uh, I really had not much idea what the Laurel Sovereign Arms does, other than says no to a lot of people. So um, hopefully I'll, I'll learn a lot from this. Uh, let's get a couple of things out of the way right quick. Uh, for the Kaid viewers, just a couple of quick notes. Uh, this Thursday, August 13th, at 7 p.m. will be our next Royal Thursday for the month, where their majesties will inform us what's going on and give us the latest information. And then uh, on Saturday, August 29th at 1 p.m. Uh, will be our next online court. And the announcement went on the Facebook group page today. So that's pretty much what I got, because nothing else going on. Um, Let's go ahead and bring my dear friend in, Bjorn, and see how he's doing. Just one moment, and hello, Bjorn. Hello there. How are you? I'm good. Did you have a good week? I did. I did. I'm um, just really looking forward to, uh, well, this performance today and also getting a, a chance to talk with our guest and, and just, uh, you know, trying to put one foot in front of the other because eventually everyone will do what they're supposed to do and 2021 will be here and we'll eventually be able to see each other in public, hopefully. Right. Okay, so uh, this is just me. But every time I hear someone say, I put one foot in front of the other, I automatically do the sing the song from the, isn't that Heat, Heat Meister, Freeze Meister uh, Christmas I, show? I think so. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, you got to put one foot. Yeah, yeah, that way. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully everyone now has that stuck in their head. Um, yes, so, I'm sorry for the earworm, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so Bjorn, um, what do you have for us from the arts and sciences side of things today? Uh, well, we have two things. Both of them are going to be on Facebook. Now, the first thing I wanted to talk to everyone about is uh, I try whenever possible to make sure that we have something in common with our guests or with the performers that will be with us and, and things that the greater SCA community and indeed the reenactor community can enjoy. Uh, this one in particular was actually brought to the attention of me by my Laurel, Mistress Vashti out of Glenavon, who said that, uh, and I quote, baby boy, and she still calls me that and I'm 50, uh, you need to look at the SCA Iberia page on Facebook. It is, uh, and it is exactly that, the SCA Iberia, and then in parentheses, Spain and Portugal website. Um, it is one of those websites that you do have to answer some questions to join. They do have a tendency to, to comb through and make sure that people that are supposed to be there are there. So if, you know, uh, bots are kept down and, and those kinds of things. And uh, they have a lot of really wonderful uh, um things for people to peruse. Um, in addition to uh, lecture series for um, uh, rapier styles, uh, Spanish rapier styles, and also clothing, there are um, other items that can be used, uh, conversations about um, the, the wonders of, uh, of Lisbon, uh, the wonders of Madrid, uh, uh, Barcelona, or if you're going to say it, Barcelona and uh, the Cantigas de Santa Maria, all these wonderful things about the Iberian Peninsula and the uh, peoples uh, therein for pre-17th century uh, culture. Um, I did ask a couple of questions about uh, really early Iberian Peninsula stuff like proto-Celts, you know, Amargin and all that stuff. And uh, there are even a couple of people who have some information on that, which is more Iron Age. But even so, it was really neat to be able to talk to people who uh, enjoyed my jam and wanted to also geek out with me. Uh, now, the second thing that I wanted to talk about was actually not as much of an arts and sciences thing as it is uh, an SCA a Kaid thing. Now, a lot of us saw His Excellency Bartholomew's 
uh, um, message from the board of directors uh, regarding finances over this past weekend. Um, and to that end, every kingdom is also responsible for their own finances. And as a 5013C company, uh, or a corporation rather, a nonprofit educational organization that we are, there are certain things that we can do and certain things that we can't do. And, uh, and I think one of the neatest things that I've seen that we could do was called Kaid Water Wars Extravaganza. This is a neat oblique fundraiser. Uh, and it started at, based out of Calafia's uh, Tin Brigade, which is the youth combat down in Calafia. And what that is, is they were encouraging a kingdom fundraiser um, from Saturday, July 11th. So it started uh, almost a month ago and it continues until December 31st of this year. And all donations that are received by the kingdom are going to be added to a donation thermometer. And as that donation thermometer ticks off each $1,000, um, then a uh, person from a landed barony and someone in youth combat will volunteer to go to war with each other with water balloons. Now, once they reach the top of the thermometer, so the, the pinnacle of this, the culmination of this, if you will, is going to be when we reach our goal, his majesty is going to have a water balloon fight against his sons. So I think that alone is definitely going to be worth the price of, of, uh, of, of some, some coins just to see his majesty get some good solid shots with water balloons because he might be able to block one, don't know if he can block them both, and they've had practice. Uh, so I think it's a really neat thing to do. It's fun to do, especially now. I, I'm pretty sure that that uh, landed barons and baronesses are going to be lining up for the next uh, for the next opportunity. Not entirely certain who's going to enjoy it in in uh, November or December, but. Let's be honest, it's Southern California. It's probably still going to be 70 degrees. But at any rate, uh, those are the things that I was looking at for this week. And I hope that you're able to enjoy both the arts and sciences aspect and also the fun aspect of uh, the websites on Facebook we chose today. That, that sounds awesome. I, I, I know I'll uh, partake of at least one of them just to see a certain Baron and Baronesses get it by balloons. It never hurts to help. <laughs> well, um, who, who's our first guest this evening? We are very fortunate that we have the Laurel Sovereign of Arms for the SCA, and it is Dame Juliana de Luna. Uh, and so she will be joining us to talk about what it is that a, uh, a Laurel Queen of Arms uh, or Laurel Sovereign of Arms does. Well, great. Well, I'll put you where uh, we can hear you, and let's bring her in just one moment. And she should be coming in right about now. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, well, where are you coming to us from? I'm coming to you from the Barony of Wieldsmere in the Kingdom of Ontier. So thousands of miles away, though not as many as it could be. That's true. And it's a gorgeous area of the king uh, of the known world, right? It is a gorgeous area of the known world. So we're talking about, of course, the in, the inland parts of Washington. I live in Spokane proper, which means near Lake Coeur d'Alene and up into the mountains. It's a really lovely place to be. So. Wow, that sounds amazing. Um, unlike, you know, if you're like living in Aitonville where you'd be in the desert. Um, That's right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so I, I thought it was a, a great opportunity to have you on the show just to talk about the position that you're in because uh, you're about to uh, transfer to the position to someone else. Is that correct? That's right. At the, by the end of the year, I will have stepped down as Laurel. I've done my two years in counting. It's almost, it'll be three years this fall. I'm actually going to serve just a little longer than three years so we can get the, 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 the situation with me and my immediate deputies set up so we're not all stepping down at exactly the same minute, but we're staggered just a little bit. So <laughs> it's like a fire drill. Everyone's out. That's right. Everyone takes their turns. So, <laughs> so uh, just for people that aren't familiar, uh, what exactly is the responsibilities of the Laurel Sovereign of Arms? So the Laurel Sovereign of Arms, and I don't mind queen or king. I'm obviously in this case queen, but sovereign's a lovely generic term, is the chief herald of the society. 
That is, we're the person who's in charge of making sure that everything heraldic happens. Now, there are some things we do really directly. So obviously you all know that we're the people who are in charge of submissions and making sure that things are registered, but we're also in charge of making sure that all that other stuff happens. So that the Principal Herald of Kaid reports to me on a quarterly basis to let me know that everything's going okay in Kaid, and if everything's not going okay for me to come in and help to sort out what needs to happen to make things work really well. Um, so one of the cool things I get going to show off first. So one of the best things about being Laurel Queen of Arms is that we actually have a crown. It terribly, it fits terribly. And, you know, I've got a mic on on top of that. But this beautiful gold thing is one of the pieces of uh, regalia we have, as is, of course, the tabard that's right behind me. So the tabard, of course, has the arms of the society because I don't represent one of the crowns. But, um, but Nonetheless, we don't use that a whole lot, but we are in charge of doing all those other things too. So, so I'm, I'm sure you sit around the house just wearing the, the cornet. Though. You, hey, if you had a crown like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, look, FedEx is here. Got to get the crown on. Um, That's right. So, so looking looking at the website where it was describing the position, you mm -hmm. know, it says you're responsible for fostering the study and practice of heraldry. Yep. establishing rules and making determinations regarding names and armory, royal mm -hmm. and noble titles, and geographical des designations to be approved for use in the society. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like anything that gets registered eventually yep. filters up to you. Is that correct? That's correct. Everything that gets registered comes across, if, if not my desk, the desk of my subordinates, because, of course, there are really three of us now. So there's Laurel, who's the chief herald of society. There's the Pelican Sovereign of Arms, who makes name decisions, and Wreath Sovereign of Arms, who makes armory decisions. So in all fairness, I was Pelican Queen of Arms from 2010 to 2014, so I've done that one, too. Um, and, of course, you all have had wreaths and laurels and all kinds of other sovereigns of arms in your kingdom too, right? So Master Bruce, of course, was Bruce Draconarius right. was laurel in 91 and 92. Jean-Marie Lacroix, right, was was wreath just before me. It's 2007 to two. No, that's not right. That's earlier than that. I don't remember what years. That's terrible. I should have looked this stuff up. Eh. Jean-Marie will forgive me. <laughs> and one of the things about the heralds is we are actually kind of we all talk to each other pretty much all the time so jean marie and i were talking over this this weekend about what she's doing right now so we do talk to each other a lot so you probably want to know a little bit about what happens with submissions well uh yeah but one, one quick note uh it's sure. pointed out that the tabard was made by kaid's very own mistress astra that's right. I hadn't. I had forgotten that, even though I knew that was true. Yes, Astra made the this tavern. So, so I just thought I'd point that out. Another connection, and yep. um, so yeah. If you want to walk us through right quick, that would be great. Okay. So, remember that armory in particular and names too are sort of one of the handful of places in the SCA where we actually care about uniqueness, and we care about uniqueness for two different reasons. So. The reason we care about name uniqueness is really simple. Crowns like to call out people's names in court and everyone go, oh, that person's getting an award. And you know, it's is really, really cool. So if we didn't have unique names, then we'd end up in a situation in which the crown would call out somebody's name and they wouldn't know who to go up or the wrong person would go up. Now, of course, because not everyone registers their name, this does in fact happen a, a, every so often. I have heard a story from a kingdom where they called up someone and someone completely different came up. And of course they had an award for person one. Thankfully the crown knew who they were giving the award to and they knew it was the wrong person. So they just gave them a quick little thrones favor, you know, thank you kind of thing. Because what would you do if you had someone sitting in front of you and you were like kneeling in front of you and you were just like, nope, didn't mean you go away. And since the crown wants to surprise people, that means we got to be able to yell people's names out and everyone go, me? Cool, right? Um, armory, of course, it's for a different reason, which is that we like to use those for identification, especially when people are fighting. And so people care a great deal about these things being unique and special. And what that means if they're going to be unique is somebody's got to be in charge of it. 
And we also, of course, a long time ago, decided that it was one of the places we were actually going to care at least a little bit about making sure that things were more or less, period. And so we ended up creating a situation in which heralds got to be the people who say no. So here's <laughs> what happens to your stuff. So first, let me say that Harold spend a lot, a lot, a lot of time and energy trying to figure out what actually works. If you go look, you can find, I've, I've done a lot of heraldic research. I have a website. I don't know, I've published somewhere between 25 and 35 articles, depending on how you count things, helping people to find names from Spain, um, from, the, from other parts of the Iberian Peninsula, so Portuguese and Catalan, as well as Spanish. New World stuff for the Maya, and I'm working on some Aztec stuff, though some other people are too. Italian, Arabic, Jewish, you name it, because we want to make sure that people have the resources to do something that's both right and also something that excites them, that makes them happy. And that means we got to make those things available. So the biggest thing we do is that. But then, so you try to find something that you like that suits your needs. And, you know, some people want stuff that's more authentic. Other people care a little less about it. I'll confess, I spent a lot of time and energy coming up with things that were sort of excruciatingly Spanish. And then later something that's excruciatingly Tudor. Um, and then it's the job of local pursuivants or local heralds to help you out with figuring things out. So you guys, for example, run big consult tables at Great Western, at Estrella, and then also at some local events as well. In the case of Kaid, then it goes to Kingdom where you guys have a local meeting one weekend a month, usually on Sundays. Um, I know because it's often true that we are doing meetings and you all are doing meetings at the same time. And what they do is they look to make sure that First, what's submitted follows the rules. That second, what's submitted isn't too close to what anyone else has. One of the things that we spend, unfortunately, way too much time and energy on right now is trying to make sure that people haven't done anything offensive. So that at the moment, unfortunately, one of the things that we sometimes talk about behind the scenes is surprise Nazis. Because, you know, that's 2020 and we can't have nice things. Um, and then assuming that everything's okay, it goes from your internal college to what we call the College of Arms, which is the heralds across the SCA. And then it appears on a letter of intent, which is just a letter that says, hey, we wanna register this stuff. And then for two months, heralds from around the known world, which includes experts from all kinds of places. So for example, we have people from Finland who surprisingly not surprisingly enough are fluent in Finnish and can tell us whether or not Finnish names are any good as well as experts from all other kinds of places and things around the world and they can help to figure out whether or not they're whether or not the submission follows the rules whether or not it's documented that is to say whether you've proven that it's something that's period or at least period enough and the like. And one of the things that's really cool is that while we sort of have a reputation for saying no, the honest truth is if you go and look, we really don't say no nearly as much as you think we do, right? <laughs> Seriously, over 90% of submissions, usually more like 95% of submissions pass, they're registered, at least at the society level. Sometimes a few more are returned in kingdom for a little bit of extra work. But part of that's because we actually spend a lot of time and energy trying to prove that things are good, not just saying no. Right, right. Well, I, I, I'll say on mine, when I went and registered it <clears throat> many years ago, um, I was very happy to get back a, the letter stating that my name was an official weirdness. And, well, congratulations. Uh, I know. And, I, and then I've seen that my name's been cited for other people to um, register their weird names. So I thought it was very appropriate that I'm an official weirdness in the SCA. Congratulations. I don't get a cool crown, but you know. I don't get to keep my cool crown. It has to move on to Anne Stiora and to my successor, Emmetta Featherston, who's going to be fantastic too. Now, the, um, the staff that the, your position has, there's mm -hmm. a whole bunch of deputies, right? There are a whole bunch of deputies. So, yeah, I there's, was, yeah, go ahead. I was going to make that the trivia game, but I'm not because I figured you'd know them all. But yeah, there's some, there's some, uh, there's a lot, right? I'd better know all of them. It would be really sad if I didn't, right? So there are people who are in charge of the rules. There are people in charge of keeping our website up and going. There are people who are in charge of making sure that, that education happens in a broad sense, though a lot of that's also working on the website. Um, we have people who work on silent heraldry. 
that is on signing in court. Um, while I don't think I have an official deputy right now, I have an unofficial deputy who's supposed to be looking at putting together some court resources as well so that we can do some sharing. That's one of those places where unlike with submissions where people really care about it being the same across the SCA. And the reason we care about it's really simple. So I started out in the SCA in Ethelmark. That is to say, when I started in the SCA, Pensick was a local event. And now I live in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> I visited lots of different kingdoms right? And people care that my arms want to be good in all of those places. But court's different everywhere. Everybody does court just a little different. Everyone has their own traditions, right? So there are Vivat kingdoms and then there are Huzzah kingdoms. Oh, I'm sure there's yeah. some other things too, right? And we don't want to make people do that all the same. So there it's just about sharing ideas, not forcing people to do it one way. Because one of the great things about the SCA is that in a lot of things, we really are different in different parts of the world. Right. Um, so yeah, we have I have lots and lots of people who work for me. And if you look, so, you know, we use this online system for commentary, it's called OSCAR, mm -hmm. right? Which stands for the Online System for Commentary and Response. But honestly, it was just a really cute acronym because it needed a name, right? Right. And if you look in Oscar, you will discover that if you take that literally, I have literally hundreds of deputies. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So it's pretty amazing. Um, so, uh, uh, Dame Alice Guy is going to explode if I don't ask the question she's been asking in comments, which is mm -hmm. um, Do we know when the next KWHSS, so Known World Historic, Heraldics, heraldic and scribal symposium. Oh, there it is. I was close. We don't know. We The answer is we don't know yet. And the reason that we don't know yet is because bids were due on April 1st. And if oh. you can imagine, yeah, exactly. So people were trying to talk to a hotel because normally it's a hotel event and people were trying to talk to hotels and, you know, everybody was in like shutdown mode. So everyone has an extension until the 1st of September. And so then we will see where the, what bids we have. I've warned everyone, because of course, normally we do it in the summer, usually in June. And I've warned everyone that we need to plan both for a virtual event and for a face-to-face -face event. I pray for a face-to-face -face event because I miss my friends. Because one of the things about Known World is it's not just the place where I do a whole bunch of work, though I do. It's also the place where I get to see a whole bunch of people and hug a whole bunch of folks because, you know, that's part of the joy. So I'm hoping we're going to be face to face, but we should have an announcement in September. It might wait until October because we may need to give people one more extension to get bids done because it's just really hard to get a hotel to even talk to you right now about the idea of having an event with 100 to 250 people. Right, right. Even for next summer, right? And that's, that's what made us wait was because bids were due right after everything shut down. Right, it seems very reasonable to do that, just given the current situation and being able to plan moving forward. And Alex, right. we love you, so. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is the point where I turn this over to Bjorn. So mm -hmm. Bjorn has a question for you, Bjorn. So when um, you have uh, a general timeline, one of the things that people do uh, because I am more of a field herald. I do some book heraldry. Most of mine is bellowing out on the field uh, or in court. Um, but on the couple of times that I have assisted people with names and devices, they usually had the same question. How long does this take? From the time that they submit the paperwork and their funding to their local herald until it goes all the way to you and then is approved, what is, what is the rough timeline for that? That's a really good question. So it's different in Kaid than in lots of other places. So I'm going to answer, give the Kaid answer and then I'm going to give the, the most other kingdoms answer. Thank you so very much. So in Kaid, because you guys have a face-to-face -face meeting of all the heralds to do decisions, basically something can show up on the same day as the decision meeting and be decided. And within a week or two, it's already on an external letter that is on a letter to the College of Arms, that is to me. So once it gets on that external letter, then it's, there are two months for commentary. So if a letter is submitted now in August, it has September and October for commentary, and then it'll be decided in November. Now, ideally we try then, then we, we start after the meeting, we spend some time and energy making sure that everything is okay. That is to say, we have a process in which things are proofread, 
And for those of you who watched the, who, who heard from the board today, you know why there's a proofreading process, which is that they said they confused two different pieces of information and, you know, got confused about, got people confused about how many members we have, how much, you know, money we spend and all that other stuff. And so we go through a process in which we work really carefully to make sure that everything's okay. So we actually have two rounds of proofreading. After the decisions are written, they go out first for a round of proofreading to basically make sure that we haven't lost our minds. I mean, it's a little bit nicer than that, to make sure we haven't forgotten anything important or failed to think about something that really matters. And then a second round to make sure that in fact, when we fixed the first thing, we didn't create any horrible typos. Um, yes, we've created a few horrible typos along the way. Uh, because of that, we also have a system of errata where we fix things that went wrong. But ideally, we want to keep from going that. So the idea is in a perfect world, a November letter would be published about the end of December, but honestly, it's more like the 15th of January. So if you submit something right now in the Kingdom of Kite, if you guys had your monthly meeting yet, I don't know. If you've had your monthly meeting, then September, it'll go out. So think the middle of February. If you haven't, then think the middle of January. Now, in most kingdoms, there's actually an internal process where people do the same kind of commentary. That is to say, it's posted on Oscar, this system that we use for all, for all of our commentary. And people can go and look at it and research it. That's because my kingdom, I could drive 11 hours and still be in my kingdom. So having a local meeting is a little bit hard. I mean, honestly, obviously you guys have the overseas part of Kaid, but Kaid proper, everyone can kind of drive to one place and meet together. In my kingdom, we can't, and in other kingdoms, we can't. So there, you have to add kind of an extra month on for people to do commentary internally, too. So something that's submitted, for example, in Ontier, at this point, would probably go on a letter in September. It would be decided in October internally, would go up, and then it would be November, December, January, February, sort of early March before we got it out. Thank you. Now, you were saying that um, you were talking about the proofreading passes. So I'm assuming that's mm -hmm. for the letter of acceptances and returns, correct? Yeah, that's for the letter of acceptances and returns. Now, um, it, the one last question I have is, mm -hmm. so when I was a part of any of this, mm -hmm. there was usually a dozen or so heralds that were involved in this proofreading process, mm -hmm. but it, that number it changes around. How exactly do you choose the heralds that are involved in the LOAR um, proofreading process? So the first answer is people who were foolish enough to say yes. <laughs> I, I'm sort of joking and sort of not. So we expect that anyone who's involved in proofreading is someone who comments actively at the Laurel level, someone who's actually doing that so they understand how the rules are. Of course, we expect that anyone who does that has to keep the answers secret, 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 because sometimes the answers change. That is sometimes, I'm just gonna continue to pick on Master Bruce, cause hey, I can. Um, sometimes we send something out on Proof Pass 1 and Bruce says, but wait, and tells us something that we'd forgotten. And so sometimes the answers do change, not often, but sometimes the answers do change while something's in Proof Pass. Um, so what we end up doing is, so, so basically people who, are foolish enough to say yes and foolish enough to do it, who are involved in commentary. So if you're interested in doing that, you ought to reach out to somebody like me and talk about, for example, whether or not you wanna come see one of the meetings and see how the sausage gets made. We have road shows that are public meetings at Known World and at other events. But we also, of course, have monthly meetings. And if people are really interested, we expect you to be commenting first because we expect you to understand sort of how the whole thing works. But, you know, over and over and over again, we've invited people to come and at least see a meeting, sit in and see what it's like. And then if you like it, maybe you'll stick around and maybe you'll be foolish enough to say yes to proofreading. Well, thank you, Dame Juliana. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I think everyone has a better idea now of the, the process to get it through mm -hmm. and the yeah. due diligence <laughs> that's done. Uh, so now we've come to the part of the show that uh, we like to just play a little friendly trivia based in the field, and I can see you're totally excited about it. So um, <laughs> I, I had a tough time coming up with a name for this one, because every week usually it just comes to me, but this one took me a little bit of time, but I'm very happy with it. Hey, Bjorn, what's the name of this game this week? Today's game is Agents of Shields. <laughs> see? Very good. That's yeah, very, that's good. I'm very proud of that one. That's um, good. 
So um, dealing with heraldry, uh, as you do, and I know you drive a car, right? Most people drive cars, right? Indeed. So, so um, <coughs> uh, you know, a lot of cars have heraldic emblems that are associated. Mm -hmm. So I thought we would have uh, give you the emblazon, see if you can identify what the car is from it. If you need a little help, I do have visuals for us. But uh, Bjorn will be reading off the different ones and see if you can guess what the make of car is. Um, so Bjorn, you want to do the first one? Certainly. Number one, Fusilli in bend argent and azure. That one's BMW, right? Oh, All right. No. That is, that's exactly correct. Very nice. Oh, wait, hey, I didn't want to do that. I didn't <laughs> even know that one. Um, we'll, we'll skip that one then. All righty. So next up, Bjorn, what's the next one? Number two. Quarterly or three stag's horns, fessways impale sable, and bury of four sable and gulls, overall or a horse salient sable. That's Alfa Romeo, right? No. Nope, no. Nope, nope. Get that one wrong. Do you want a you want horse. a visual? Yeah. Huh? No, 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 no. This is this is a this is a I'm a girl. This is the I'm a girl in camera sports cars. Oh, what did you just say a second ago? Porsche. That is correct. Got the second time, right? There's a Porsche. I can picture it. I just couldn't remember who it was. Very nice. Okay, so um, number three, Bjorn. Well, number three is horse salient sable on a, it should be an ore field, but they have made sure that it is Kanadi yellow. All right, now that one stumps me, and and it's not because uh, you can show it to me, but I'm just I'm I, this is this is the as a girl. Hmm. Okay. Fiat? I don't remember who. It Somebody. Ferrari. Ferrari. Yeah. European sports cars. I'm not good at European sports cars. I'm under the impression it was or, but they insist. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, next one. Number four. Or a Griffin Gulls. Crowned Azure. Now, this one I would never get, by the way. Oh, so. uh, good, because I'm completely like, like blanking. I don't, you're going to have to just tell me this one. It is, a, it's cons uh, the arms of a province in southern Sweden, if that helps. Uh, well, nope. Nope. Yeah. See, I knew that was a, we, we Who is it? Oh, this. Saab. I'm, I, I I know who Saab is, but I still didn't know that was Saab. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. we'll skip the next one because I ruined it for you. Um, <laughs> we'll get to the last the one. final one: okay. Pale Argent across gulls and Azure a serpent ondiant in pale verd crowned with a ducal crown or and Vorant a child gulls. So just as a matter of curiosity, the second arms are the Visconti arms. Uh, it looks like it. Yeah, they're the Visconti yep. arms. Yep. Which so, means it's which means it's Italian. Mm -hmm. um, I can give you a visual. You can, but again, I don't think it'll help me. Uh, okay. No, nope, no. Nope. Nope. I, I told you I'm not good at this. I'm not good at this. I can tell you whose arms they are, but I can't tell you which car company it is. Alfa, Alfa Romeo. Romeo, which of course I said earlier for the other one. Yeah, well, you did pretty good. I, yeah. I mean, it's like you should, you do this stuff for a living. Well, uh, thank. <laughs> well, that's, that's the end of our time with you tonight. I sincerely appreciate you coming on, kind of enlightening the viewers of the mm -hmm. process and and it's very obvious the passion and knowledge you bring to the position and uh, and the dedication that you've given, not just in this position, but for other ones you've had through the years. And uh, I just want to speak for myself. Uh, thank you for your dedication and time to it, the passion and the and obvious joy you bring to it. Um, and, um, you know, if I ever need something else registered, I know I know how to jump the chain and just send it to you, right? So There you go. There you go. And seriously, I'm easy to find online, on Facebook, and other places. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions or comments or anything you just want to bug me about. Well, thank you very much. You have a great evening. And uh, hopefully we'll bump into each other soon when we can have events again. Be thank safe. you. I look forward to it, too. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks. You, too. Uh, okay, Bjorn, so uh, people want to know how you emblazon the caddy emblem. So you, you have it still? 
I do have it. Give me just a second. So I would blazon the caddy emblem as quarterly one and four, or a fest between three martlets sable, two and three, quarterly goals and argent, three bars azure. I can tell you you're 100% correct. <laughs> it's written right there. So probably. <laughs> Oh, but that that was fascinating. I I I I, I knew there was a process, and I kind of had the the general idea, but the work and dedication and research and knowledge they put in to keep it within the realm of what we wanted to be just you know fascinating. I was an absolute hellion to the local heralds when I was a a, a kid first starting in the SCA. I. I probably I wasn't the the start of the term slot machine heraldry, but I continued to throw the same types of things at those poor, woe begotten people because my twelve year old, thirteen year old, fourteen year old mind had, and I want this, and it's going to have fire, and there's going to be a dragon, and I want a bear, and it it I they bless those patient patient people for putting up with me all those years ago <laughs> yeah um i didn't have arms registered until uh his excellency duran twisted my arm uh, to get it done so um there we go and hey it's green and have shimmer or quatrefoils but you know hard to believe green um anyway so i i hear you're very familiar with the performer we have on this evening I am indeed. Yeah. Uh, he's this dude I've known my entire life. Uh, yeah. So uh, <laughs> um, in particular, last time I performed, uh, I sang. And this time I'm going to be performing a poem. Uh, it's one that I get requested to do a lot, especially uh, back east, um, because here in Kaid, I'm somewhat of an anomaly, but where we come from, where I lived most of my time, uh, I am just above average sized. In Kaid, I'm a beast. I'm, I'm a giant, but right. elsewhere, not so much. Uh, so I guess it is now 25 years ago. Is that 95? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So 25 years ago, um, one of my very dear friends uh, and someone I went to college with uh, was uh, now his grace, Duke Radu Ferenzi. But back then, Radu and I both sang at the University of Mississippi. And he's 6'9", um, and uh, uh, an excellent bass baritone, great fighter. And uh, people would occasionally jibe at him, uh, uh, make fun, uh, which... I think is rather odd that you'd pick on a dude that's that big because he would do bardic stuff and also fight. And they did the same thing to me and they did the same thing to a lot of people out there. Uh, but we had a lot of bigger guys back East, the, the feasty boys. I think the smallest guy there was 325. Um, and uh, so I wrote this poem about, uh, about, about bigger guys that did this kind of a thing. And so that would be the performance that I'll be doing this evening. Well, that, that sounds that sounds great. I, it's better than the yeasty boys, but um, they do brew some good stuff, though. That's true. All righty. Well, the floor is yours, my friend. Thank you so much. So, ladies and gentlemen, as I just said, this poem was written 25 years ago for then Lord, now Duke uh, Radu Ferenzi. At the time, we lived in Merdiers, and now he lives in Calentir. And uh, I did talk with him briefly earlier today. And Your Grace, I hope you and your family are safe and doing well. So this is uh, a bard and a warrior. A bard and a warrior into a tavern went. In time, they set to arguing who was the better gent. They fought it out for quite a while till both thought they would burst. They then asked me to hear each case. The warrior then went first. <clears throat> well, I protect our land and king, said the warrior with a bellow. The ladies sigh as I ride by. I am the better fellow. The warrior finished with his tail and said, you see, I'm right. It's my turn now, the bard replied, and he drew himself upright. Well, I protect our lineage, the bard went on to say. The ladies swoon when e'er I croon, therefore I win the day. I listened very patiently. Then, um, 
finished off my dram. And when they asked, well, who's the best? I answered back, I am. Now, warrior, it is very true. You have a, a good, strong arm, but you also have a strong odor. You lack all grace and charm. And bard, it's true. You have a voice that's known both far and wide, but when there's fighting to be done, you run away and hide. And while I, you see, don't run and hide, my breath does not offend. And though ladies may not swoon nor sigh, all ladies call me friend. So now good gentles assembled here amidst all swoons and sighs, a fighting bard does twice the work. That's why I'm twice the size. Told you it was a quick one. And I'm not sure where he is. There you are. All right, everyone, you can now drink because Laertes has muted himself. Yeah, I may, almost made it the whole show. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. Well, I mean, you know, people need that extra shot here and there just to get their Monday started. <laughs> wow. So uh, thank you very much for your stories today. You're more than welcome. Um, so uh, I think uh, fascinating talking to James Uliana today. It was indeed. And uh, just so you know, um, <laughs> people are doing shots. I see in the comments. <laughs> um, the um, for for next week, I've lined up for an interview. If uh, if you're curious about, hey, how did rapier really start in the SCA, especially in Ponce Dior and the how the white scarf came about and stories of the earlier earlier times when we used boils and epes, um, and someone who's experienced pretty much the full breadth of the growth of rapier in the SCA, uh, we're going to have Master Robin of Gilwell on the show. Oh. Uh, he really tell us about the history of that. He will probably share some stories of Don Tyvar, who, as we all know, uh, passed away and um, left an indelible mark on the society. Indeed. I'm looking forward to that. Um, you and I both... Uh, knew him and uh, fenced him. So uh, I'm sure we'll have a, uh, I will try not to go too far afield. And so, so people will be able to resume their Mondays <laughs> and we're not going too far. All right. Well, um, and then we'll have our regular party performances. We have, yes, uh, we, we have, have um, people coming in from on people coming in from the East. Uh, we have, uh, um, we're, we're just, it's, it's really nice. But once again, I, I want to make sure that the bards of the SCA know, contact Laertes or contact myself if you're interested in performing. Uh, but like, who knows, in a case of real life, you can break glass and Bjorn will appear. So we, we, we've got you covered. All right. So if you want to drop a note, if you're interested in performing on the show, or even there's somebody you want us to have a conversation with that you'd be interested in that, you can just drop an email to livefromkaid at gmail.com. It'll come, and we will, we will uh, make sure that uh, we do our best to arrange that. So thank you very much. Well, uh, that's our show for this evening, and uh, that's my phone ringing. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Bjorn. Thank you, my friend. And uh, once again, we will see you next week when we will be live from Kaid. We'll Bye. see you then. Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs>